Now, Manchester United are the next team to visit St Mary's on Saturday the 14th. It's going to be the lunchtime kickoff. I guess the big question, Alfie, we've, we've touched on this a little bit already this week. Will Russell Martin stick or twist uh, after the international break? It's the million dollar question, isn't it? What's uh, in your heart? What are you thinking? What are you thinking about changes and how we might set up? Well, I think the biggest question actually is, is this the easiest game of the season so far? Because Man United look absolutely terrible. Um, certainly did today. No, I think, he, I think he'll twist. Obviously, he's not going to stick. Um, no way. It wouldn't surprise me if they still play a five at the back um, because I think that it offers him all the key players he wants. Equally, I won't be surprised if it is a 4 3 3, but he'll definitely make changes. There'll definitely be at least one change in midfield. Cameron Archer will start, um, and yeah, maybe one more as well. So it's going to be the hardest team to predict so far, um, but I think he has to make changes. I don't dislike the fact that he's a loyal manager because he does have a ruthless streak. I think Steve may have even tweeted something to this effect actually in the last couple of days, but he, he's, we've seen him make ruthless changes at times. You know, McCarthy didn't sit on the bench at all last season. Joe Lumley thought he was in the shout. Bazuna gets injured. Sorry, Joe, McCarthy's back in, and mm. it's a, proved to be a brilliant decision. I think Steve tweeted a couple other examples as well. He is a ruthless manager, but I don't hate the fact he's been loyal. These are the guys who got him up to the Premier League. They're the same guys that I probably would have started in these first three games as well. It gave them a chance. A couple of them didn't deliver for him, and now they're going to lose their place, and that's football. But yeah, I don't think that um, it's a slight against him that he's stuck with some of the guys who he says have built up so much credit. It was credit in the bank, wasn't it, Alfie? That was the word he mentioned. So do you, th- do you think that credit has kind of run out for a couple of them now? Yeah, I think credit only goes so long, doesn't it? And, you know, <laughs> Russell Martin, the manager himself, just got this club promoted um, in a season which was defining for the finances and it would have been a completely different direction we're talking about. And it seems like with a lot of people, the credit that was there has already run out for him as well. So it's only natural that it happens within the squad and the players. So, yeah, um, I think they had credit in the bank and they've uh, they've now got to earn that credit back. It's a bit of a giveaway, Steve. I mean, he said yesterday the team will be different against Manchester United. So um, we're expecting a, a different team. Do you think we will see the the five at the back or do you think it'd be 4-3-3? Um, I think it'd be 4-3-3. Um, I don't base that, base that on much other than kind of a gut feel. I mean, obviously the substitutions at half time yesterday um, changed the system so that um, Fernandez was getting on the ball. Um, Archer kind of just slotted in exactly where um, Adam Armstrong had been. Um, but then the, I think the key one was removing Harwood Bellis midway through the second half. Um, and it's it's interesting, isn't it, that I think if you'd polled 10,000 Saints fans in the summer and said at the September international break, we're going to make a formation change and one of the centre-backs is going to be dropped, who are you going to pick? I reckon 9,000 odd at least would pick Jack Stevens. Mm. And yet the substitution that we saw yesterday, even though we spent 20 million quid on him in, in, in the summer, the substitution yesterday suggested that that change is more likely to be um, Howard Bellis, um, which is interesting. Um, I mean, I, as I say, I, I, I missed, I, I was trying to watch the Forest game on a stream when I was at a wedding up, up in Scotland on, on Saturday and caught bits of it, but didn't, didn't really get on top of it um so i don't i don't really have anything to say from the in terms of the forest performance in terms of who was particularly at fault for anything anybody played badly played averagely or whatever um but from obviously from yesterday harwood bellis made the key um was the key uh concedure of possession for the opening goal um arguably could have done better with the um, from the throw-in, I think we were we were quite weak in that all round. I don't think that's necessarily on just on him, but mm. he was one of the players in there. And as as a centre half, you're expected to to be able to deal with these sort of things. Um, and ultimately, we all know that that the manager wants uh, Jack Stevens' vocal leadership in in that team, um, come what may. And I think, yeah, that that probably. That probably lessens lessens the kind of options in terms of um, switching things around um, at the back. So yeah, I I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's um, Bednarek and Stevens as a two next week with um, Downs and Leslie Ugachukwu in front. Um, so that probably means that Smallbone drops out. Um, Joe Rebo's harder to harder to pick, I think, in terms of whether he stays or goes. He's Done okay in first halves, I think, so far this season, but faded, faded fairly quickly after the break. 
Um, we, we kind of saw that last year, though, didn't we? I think. Yeah, to, yeah, to an extent. But I think there was there was certainly a point once it once he was back in the team as a regular in kind of March, where we saw that he was able to do it for the ninety minutes. I mean, obviously the the, the levels required of fitness and stamina in the Premier League are are very different, but it's still. Um, it's still kind of a mental a mentality thing of can you um can you stay switched on and focused for this long um so whether whether he retains his place and and fernandez starts um or whether it's a case of we will um kind of look at look at making that change either at half time if things are going badly or um midway through the second half if we're kind of in the game and that can and fernandez coming on can then push us push us forward a little bit more. Um, I think Archer will start instead of Adam Armstrong. Um, and you might even see, um, maybe I'd, I'd be surprised, but also wouldn't be, it wouldn't be completely mental to, to perhaps have Dibbling in for um, Brereton Diaz, mm. um, just as someone who holds the ball better. Because, I mean, I've, I mean, I find it mad how um, players with the characteristics of Tyler Dibbling, where shin pads that are literally about three inches long. Yeah, it's a Jack um, Rudish style, isn't it? Because, because it just feels They're like you're, kicked. you're, you're yeah. literally asking players to break your leg. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's a, it's literally, it's a, just an invitation, isn't it? And I, I find, I find that, that thing absolutely mad. Um, and if I was a manager, I'd be, I'd be kind of saying, you sure you want to be doing this kid? You know, yeah. I, I did um, say to Tyler actually on the um, one of the preseason games this season, like you know, what are you doing with those shin pads? And he just he just sort of joked and said they're the perfect size, mate. So I don't think he's worried about it at all. It's it's I find that mad, but um, but yeah, he's he's one of the players that I think is him and the Lana are the two that we've got that are the sort of players that can work in those really tight areas. Um, they're not afraid of having three players around them and kind of shielding it. Um, they can work themselves out of a tight area. I think Fernandez will probably be able to do that over time, but I think he's he's also probably a little bit lightweight in terms of um, the physicality that you'll come up against in centre midfield. Um, that he will get booted, and um, I think I think Dibbling will likely be um, slightly stronger. Um, he's obviously a lot bigger. Um, so yeah, may, maybe those, those are, those are probably the, the realistic options. I'd, I'd be, I'd be surprised if Sam Ammo was, was in the frame, uh, realistically. I mean, obviously a dozy we've, we've tried to, uh, try to send out on loan, um, at the, at the 11th hour and failed to do so. So I find mm -hmm. it difficult to think that he'll be, um, anywhere near the team for, for the foreseeable future. And of course we've got Ryan Fraser just, just come back in the door, yeah. um, presumably not fit. Um, no, no, but... so I would imagine we're, I mean, he's, he's probably not going to, I wouldn't, wouldn't even think he'd be on the bench for, for a few games. Maybe, maybe, maybe get some sort of involvement in that Everton game. Who knows? No, mm. I know we're getting on we're going on a bit here, Mike. I just want to add two things. Number one, loads of comments about Maxwell Cornet. Um, he's at the moment, he's oh, not forgot fit. About him. Yeah, he's not fit at the moment. So, um, he's going to take a while to get, up, you know, a few weeks to get up to speed. He's got, I think, a, a very, very minor knock basically, but I don't think he's going to be ready to play in the first game or if he is, certainly not from the start. Um, just on Taylor Howard Bellis, um, look, I love Taylor Howard Bellis. He's a, he's a good player. He's going to be a brilliant one. He plays for England and Wales for a reason. He was fantastic last season. But the mental acrobatics that some fans are going through to try and justify how he's been better than someone like Jack Stevens this season are just, for me, a little bit mind boggling. Russell Martin brought him off against um, Nottingham Forest. He's brought him off again at Brentford. You know, I'm not saying bring Taylor out of the team. I'd start all three of them again. Um, but I just think that people are because he's shiny and new and costs twenty million quid and he's young and I think people are really just saying that he's um, you know he's been way better than the other two or Jack Stevens specifically and I don't think that's just I don't think that's true this season so that'll be for me why if he does he will start Jack Stevens um, again I'd start all three but yeah I just wanted to say that about um, Taylor because some of the, some of the acrobatics have been the scapegoating of Jack Stevens has gone way too far at the moment. There's a reason, I guess, John, you could argue for starting every one of the, the three centre-backs. There's also a reason for taking every one of the three out of the team. So this is one of those sort of debates which could go on. I mean, we could chat about this all night, but this is going to be the, the debates in the pubs before and, and after the game, isn't it? If you were picking that team for United, are you, you going with five at the back? And, 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 and who would you like to see? Yeah, well, I'm sort of with Steve on pre predicting four at the back. I think, you know, it's the biggest change you can make to free up 
having an extra player going forwards. Um, and it means you can have a front three. It means you can have a central striker like Archer. Um, I'd totally forgotten about Maxwell Corn Cornet as well. So uh, yeah, that's quite nice. I was like, oh, nice. We can, we can get him involved at some point. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of who would like to come, come in, I think realistically in midfield, I think just taking out a Rebo and Smallbone seems particularly disruptive to me. Um, Russell Martin might think differently, who knows? But I think, yeah, he'll, he'll take one of them out. I'd say Rebo is probably the better player against Brentford. So say Smallbone comes out, I think you're seeing Fernandez come in there. Um, and then it's, yeah, it's whether or not he does go four at the back or five at the back for if you see Cameron Archer coming in with two effective wingers outside or... You know, the likes, of, you know, is Ben Perez and Diaz still in? Um, who goes on the right in that case, if it's not Adam Armstrong, maybe has all three on. You know, it's a bit of, it's always a bit of a lottery as we sort of saw last season. But um, yeah, I think it would be good to see four at the back sort of go bold in that respect in terms of, you know, defensively. Um, yeah, that's what I would be hoping to see quite quite a big change. If he goes nuts and changes loads, I'm kind of up for that as well because it's like you've got to throw, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. It would be a bit hard on um, Sugawara, Steve, but th we I think we spoke about this maybe last week or the week before. We weren't expecting Carl Walker-Peters to still be here. We'll get on to the, the transfer um, business in just a moment. And, you know, arguably that was one of the, the highlights, but we weren't expecting to have him at right back. Is there an argument that Carl Walker-Peters plays at right back because that's his best position? Then we bring one of the others in, in at left back? Um, yeah, possibly. Um, I mean, he is... I mean, as as promising as Sugawara has looked um, in his brief time here, um, ultimately we still have to recognise that probably Carl Walker Peters is is a far superior right back. I would say um, it would be harsh on him, doesn't it? Because he was he's, he's had a man of the match. And you can't drop Sugawara. You, you you can't score a goal for love nor money, and he's someone who mm. offers threat. You can't drop him. You'll, you'll play both of them. Mm. But I I think yeah. Ultimately, I think the the question is probably which is the combination of of two which gives you the best output. And I think having Sugarwar on the right and Walker Peters on the left, because I don't think you diminish Walker Peters' game that much by playing him on the left. Agreed. Whereas um if you're putting Charlie Taylor at left back, I think you're probably then quite a defensive minded left hand side. Um whereas Walker Peters will at least give you threat in both directions. Mm. Um, and Sugawara obviously has already proven that he's he's pretty handy um, going forwards. So, yeah, I, I think that the combination of those two is, is the best at the moment. Um, it might be that if we do switch to a four, then maybe there is, um, there is kind of cause to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more pragmatic. Um, on the fullbacks, and then at that point, maybe you look at Walker Peters on the right and um, Taylor, um, Charlie Taylor on on the left. Um, that's that's possible options. And I mean, let's be honest; these players are, are going to going to pick up little knocks and possibly suspensions and things like that. So um, players will get an opportunity in these in these positions, and we'll kind of figure it out, I guess. Well, last time we played them at home, John, it was that 1-0 defeat and Gineppo started at left-back. So it, it kind of feels to me like we, we've moved on quite a bit in that two years. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit, certainly <laughs> in terms of, <laughs> of the options, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe like Steve says, Charlie Taylor, left-back, a bit more defensive, try and be a bit more solid. I mean, and like you know, like I say, if you've got that extra player, if you've literally got two wingers, in theory, they can do the job. Um but yeah, it's about yeah, it's about exploiting Man United's not great spell uh, at the start of this season. And Ten Hag, Alfie, is a man under pressure at the moment. I mean, they mm. need to be in the the top six at least by Christmas, don't they? Currently, what fourteenth going into the international break? Is it? Are they going to be a bit of a, a, a wounded beast with a point to prove, or, or do you genuinely think we could we could get at them? And this might be one of the better games. Yeah, I think they're going to play Man United. A good time to play them is when they've just been spanked by Liverpool, right? Um, <laughs> they do tend to perform well against Saints, I think people have said, but um, I don't think they're an unbeatable team. Uh, the focus probably does still have to be on Southampton themselves and actually 
figuring out what they're doing wrong rather than worrying about whether the opposition can be got at. But they do need to um, they do need to make a statement, I think, at home. And it's back to back home games, right? Um, with Ipswich the next week yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, if we don't get and anything out of this, then Ipswich is exactly huge. my point. Exactly my point. So if you don't get anything out of this May United game, that Ipswich game all of a sudden is going to be a real pressure cooker, um, and it would be ideal to avoid the tension in the stadium for that one. So they can do themselves a big favour um, by getting something out of the May United game. Uh, we'll do score predictions in just a moment. Anything else on Man United, Steve? Good time to play them. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, because obviously, ten obviously having had that spanking this afternoon, where obviously everybody is, I mean, Liverpool just run through the middle of them as mm. everyone did at the back end of last season. I mean, yeah. nothing seems to have changed at Old Trafford. Um, I mean, they've signed Manuel Agate, yeah, who yeah. who wasn't available for today, but will presumably start in place of mm. Casemiro, who was hopeless again. I think Luke Shaw um, will be coming back in as well after the international break. Uh don't know. I'm not sure how long his what his prognosis was, but um yeah, I mean I, I think the the mid the midfield is the key with United. Um I think because if you can if you can get out and through the midfield, they just vanish. It like every team back end of last season, um, I mean Palace absolutely tore them to pieces um in that Monday night game. Is that four was it four nil in the end that one? And just the the midfield was just hopeless. I mean, Cob, Cobby Mainu does look a very promising player, but his positional discipline at the moment, because of his age, he gets caught too. He gets caught the wrong side of the ball far too often. And where Casemiro just can't run anymore, seemingly, um, they have nobody to to bail him out. So there is that huge space to operate in, which may which may actually be a pointer in terms of um, who starts. Um, in that game, maybe maybe that's the role for um, for Fernandez to to operate in that in that little hole. Mm. Um, but yeah, they, they just, oh god, they were just rubbish, weren't they today? Mm. Um, I mean, Liverpool were quite good, but they didn't didn't have to really get out of second or third gear. I didn't think it was pretty comfortable. And if they could have been bothered, they could have um, could have got six or seven and made it properly embarrassing. But I think the problem, the problem is for us is that them having had that jolt to the system, I mean, yeah, you, you can go to, you can go to Brighton and lose, lose by the odd goal. That happens. Uh, teams do that. Uh, getting absolutely spanked on your, on your own turf by again. Yeah. Again, theoretically <laughs> by your biggest rivals. Um, that's always a bit of a wake up call at any time mm. in the season, let alone, um, three weeks in so i think um yeah that that will be that'll be a bit of a wake-up call and and he'll be ten hag will be working on something specific to kind of get them into a into some sort of functioning shape because what what they spewed out onto the uh old trafford turf this afternoon was was just an absolute mess well everyone had left before the end uh, should we do some score predictions um Alex Sinfield is top of the patron leaderboard now with uh, five points, which is pretty decent for this early in the season, let me tell you. Uh, seven of the 81 people in the league got the correct score. So there's been a lot of movement. Do check that out on the a lot of negativity. social media. <laughs> if you're watching live, uh, as always, stick your score predictions uh, into the comments. John, I'm going to ask you first on this um, score prediction for you, please. Yeah, I'm going to go to all. I think, you know, we, we, okay. can, we can get at them. But I think we won't be able to do enough to to get all three points. So I'll go to all. But a point on the board, uh, nonetheless. Yeah, I'll Alfie, take it. Is this where we get our first point? Yeah, I do. I do think it, it might be actually. Um, so I, I will go for a, a one-one because I don't see two goals coming for some of them. Okay, and Steve. Oh God, um, I see a scoring, um, but at the same time, there's absolutely no chance we're keeping a clean sheet. Um, my concern is that. Um, no matter how well we've played played against Man United at home, we never win. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we'll probably get edged out. It, it, I think it's going to be another one of those Newcastle-esque games where we come out of it and say, OK, we've we've played pretty well. We've shown some, posi- some positive things. We can see progress, but ultimately we're, we're still going to end up losing. So I think uh, probably 2-1 United. And the pressure will be on for the, uh, the Ipswich game. 